Thank you, Dara. Our next speaker is uh, Alan Cawley. Alan developed an excellent understanding of construction techniques and uh, health, safety, quality and environment issues on site through his time as an engineer and operative and during his studies for a construction and project management degree. He then chose to specialise in environmental management during his time on site and acquired a range of qualifications in environmental systems and management, culminating in MSc. In his current role with CISC, he provides environmental support to a wide range of CISC projects, providing environmental advice, impact assessment and mitigation approaches. He has qualified as a CQAL assessor and has been at the forefront of developing sustainability initiatives as well as being a lead environmental auditor. Thank you. Hi. Hi all, uh, good to be back here. Uh, she went to college here in GYT for uh, four years altogether, three years for my ordinary degree and uh, came back then after I did my uh, honours degree and did a master's in environmental system. So it's good to be back here. Uh, so today I'm just going to go through um, stable features on the bottom clean project. So this development is targeting uh, zero carbon uh, development. Uh, so I'm basically going to go through what uh, certifications, sustainability cert certifications the project is going for and then just a few examples of what we're doing on site to uh, kind of promote sustainability and uh, zero carbon. So just a bit of an overview of the bottom key site. So um, it's based down there around by the Lockatolia Road. Um, it was the old uh, oil storage, if people remember that. Um, so it's been derelict now for a few years. Uh, but basically what we're, what's been built there now at the moment, um, it's uh, 34,400 uh, square meters of grade A office space. And it's going to be in four blocks. So at the moment, we're contracted to do the, uh, the first two blocks. So that's the Santiago and the Alcantara uh, phase one. Um, so the overall project, it's going to provide 92% uh, green space uh, for public realms. Uh, there's going to be high profile retail center uh, of 2,000 square meters. That's going to be on the uh, kind of bottom floors. Um, landscape roof gardens, uh, 8,500 uh, square meters of new landscape space as well around. So the development's going to be a lot of green infrastructure kind of surrounding it. Uh, and then also the office space in for up to 2,600 workers. Uh, there's an on-site cultural space as well. So that's going to be on the roofs. Uh, and then there are the two phases there below. So the names they actually came from uh, Spanish Armada, some of the ships. So uh, it was nice to kind of bring that <coughs> into development as well. So, uh, with regards to sustainability, uh, there's several different certifications that are kind of going for, and kind of a lot of them kind of interact as well. So you have uh, you need gold. So it's, you'll see a lot of developments around Ireland that are going for uh, the lead uh, certification. Um, so this is for version four that we're going for that, um, and then the gold well building standard. Uh, that's more to do, I'll go through all this uh, in the next kind of couple of slides, but it's kind of more to do with inside the building and how it interacts with the people that are working there. Uh, and then this other initiative is One Planet Living. Uh, this is uh, kind of goes through the sustainable development goals as well to a certain extent. So there's 10 kind of principles there which we'll go through. Uh, Consider construction scheme is, is another one. Uh, then it's going for BR, A rated, and also wired score platinum. So, just a little bit here about um, need uh, and what's, uh, what's been developed with need. So, from a design point of view, they've integrated a lot of different um, kind of features uh, into the building. But from more of a construction point of view, what we kind of look at is the kind of waste management and uh, how we kind of deal with the waste on site and hit the credits for need. Um, and also then with water efficiency, that's, uh, again, it's different uh, things have been developed, like the aerated taps, uh, you know, low flush uh, systems as well, um, into the um, toilets. Uh, optimum energy use as well, um, that's uh, included. Uh, 
And then you have things in that kind of integrate with the well standard, which is your atmosphere, um, again, the energy use as well, uh, that uh, kind of feeds into it uh, nicely. Uh, and uh, again, look at your material use. So look at your materials that you use. So to say we're a concrete, we need to have a certain percentage of TGBS included in it. Um, and, and things like that. Uh, so again, you look at the indoor, indoor air quality that interacts with your well, and also uh, then that goes into your kind of operation kind of phase. So um, the well standard then. Um, so this is quite new into Ireland. There isn't too many buildings that have. Uh, have, are certified well as of yet. I think there's uh, only there's a couple that I'm aware of. So the Arab offices maybe down in Cork and the uh, uh, I push um, head off uh, I push office in St Stephen's Green. They're also well certified. So this development we're trying to bring in uh, all the kind of ethos of well. So what well does is uh, brings in the the seven concepts for a healthy building. So to look into your air, water, um, see there, air, water, nourishment, light, fitness, uh, comfort, and money. So it's all about you're spending 90% of your time inside buildings. So you need to be comfortable in the surroundings. So uh, Bono Key has incorporated a lot of this, well, all this, all the seven uh, concepts into into the building. Um, so it's. Kind of works hand in hand, as I said, with lead uh, in, in bits and pieces. So it's um, it's new and it's well, it's launched in 2014, so it's it's still quite fresh. Um, so one planet living. Uh, this is it's a new concept to me uh, personally. Um, so this is brought in 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 Bono Key as well. So um, it was developed by uh, by regional. Um, it's a charity, and um, again, there's 10 different principles that are um, incorporated into the whole One Planet Living cycle. So it's basically the principle of One Planet Living uh, framework brings scalability to life in communities and development around the world. So adopting the framework across the site will help businesses and organizations in Bonnaki do good, good by people, good by place, good by planet. So if you see the 10 principles there, so the kind of deal with a lot of these we try as much as we can to incorporate them into construction, but some of them it'll be more towards the operation phase. So with one planet living, it's not just the construction building, it's kind of the whole life cycle where it'll, it'll be embedded. So the 10 principles, health and happiness, uh, equity and local economy, uh, culture and community, land and nature, sustainable water, local and sustainable food, travel and transport, materials and products, zero waste and zero carbon energy. So what what we had to do with Bioregion was develop um, a suite of KPIs that kind of dealt with each one of these uh, 10 principles. So um, these are just some of the KPIs here that um, we kind of developed. So what, what we looked at was kind of like our overall aim. So you see there on the left, um, zero waste. So what we were kind of wondering like what can we do to reduce the waste of construction phase. So we looked at kind of waste intensity and looked at kind of targets and like towards kind of project spend, like how much um, construction waste to be generated and how can we kind of lower it. So we kind of developed a KPI again all these had to be agreed with um, fire region. So we agreed on a target of 2.5 tons construction waste per 100,000 euro project spend. Um, like that's it might seem like a lot, but it's um, that's uh, below the um, kind of industry standard at the moment. Uh, we also then hit another target. Well, we're aiming for another target: ninety percent construction waste to be done virtual from landfill. So that kind of feeds in with the lead as well, where um, the aim for lead is seventy-five percent. But again, with lead, they're, they're taking in the, the different considerations taken there with that seventy-five percent. So there's kind of fines that. Um, that we that go off to landfill, but it's generally not um, classified as, as a waste per se, it's more like a cover material. So, so with um, 
these KPIs as all you know the commitments in of what we're going to do. So with, like we have engaged with the uh, our waste contractor and kind of went through kind of options of how we can reduce the waste. Um, so again, the segregation that you kind of usually see on construction sites, which is you know metals, timbers, plastics, you know plasterboard is another big one, and then kind of segregate your um, clean dry recyclables, canteen waste, and food waste, and again your hazardous waste as well. So there is a good system in place there on the project for kind of zero waste, and then look at then your zero carbon energy. So again, we propose a target of. 1500 kg CO2 per 100,000 spend. So, to really hit this target, we had to kind of think about a few things on site. So, this is really recording our kind of energy use from our um, electricity on site and generators, and also um, any fuel use in from especially like the, the bulk dig that would have that started that, that, that started the project. So one of the things with CISC, what we've done over the last kind of few months is that we're, we've actually, we're procuring all our um, electricity now. It comes from renewable sources, so we um, kind of hitting a kind of a good kind of target there to be um, kind of promoting. Um, and then the other things in early connection to um, mains power. Uh, once you get into that, you're getting used in for, um, for big heavy generators on site and like there's you kind of need one or two fold there with the kind of with the um with the fuel use as well. So it's there are things that we kind of looked at from an early part of the project and CISC as a whole. Uh, other uh, example KPI sense for travel and transport. So the site has a green travel plan, like we kind of push the green travel buses, walking, bikes. Um, so they're just Few things there as well. We're we've committed to including the electric vehicle charging point as well, just in our compound. So that's not part of the full development. That's just for for our own compound for the guys to come to work. So if we do have an electric vehicle, and again we have logistics plans, track plans, plans in place. So one of the KPIs here is um, trying to reduce the commercial vehicle movement for uh, delivery to site. So we kind of looked at KPIs for this, and we found one in the UK, which is um, eighty point one journeys per hundred thousand. Uh, again, we're we're kind of track this at the moment so that we can get as much deliveries to site in kind of one consignment rather than having delivery after delivery after delivery. So if we're going to supplier, we want to get as much material in as we possibly can, and if we have space for it. So there's a lot of kind of planning around that now at the moment. Uh, and then products and materials. So one here that we're looking at is FSC timber. So 100% permanently installed timber is being sourced. So overall, we're kind of aiming that all the timbers, uh, like permanent and temporary, is going to be FSC. Um, but in Ireland, at the moment, there's a few kind of issues with kind of suppliers and trying to get have the suppliers being FSC certified. But there's a whole chain of custody that's uh, kind of there in the background. That's uh, the chains are broken, but um, we're kind of driving our supply chain to get um, sustainable source timber on site. Um, and then we've committed then to a minimum of 55 per TBDS to be used uh, with 50 consoles as well. So that is, that's a good target to have. And then 100% steel used to be care certified, which is probably standard enough um, KPI. So uh, wired. And uh, BER, so wired, it's all about con conductivity with, um, with the building and whoever the occupants are going to be. So um, it really empowers kind of landlords to have full conductivity and get uh, people, you know, it's a good place to work. That, um, so we're, we're aiming for platinum in that. Uh, and then also BER, uh, it's an A3 rating that we're going for as well. Um, uh, in the building. So again, I think these are um, good things to have uh, in the building. Uh, the next thing we'll go through, which kind of feeds in a little bit as well to uh, One Planet Living, um, is the Zero Constructor Scheme. So this is, I'm not too sure if any of you have heard of it, but it's been in Ireland now since 2017, but it's been in the UK for 20 years before that in um, 1997. Uh, so basically, what this is, there's 
five different sections uh, I'd go through. Um, and it's all about having the project, having people contributing kind of embedded into what we're doing, uh, while also taking account your environmental health and safety, uh, providing information and uh, good welfare to the workforce. Uh, and also the appearance of the site to make sure that our site it looks like a good place to work. It's what I want to do is really like promote construction, get people in, into the industry. So it's just getting that image of maybe years ago when it looked like a dirty industry to be working in. So having CCS, it actually it works quite well in just promoting what we're doing. So again, these are just the, the five different areas of uh, CCS. Uh, we actually had uh, and all of them there in last week, so we're waiting on the score. So a lot of our KPIs for the one planet living. So just say for environment, we feed that into that section as well into uh, the one planet living. So if we've got a score of eight, we, we, that's a KPI that we have to hit. So it's all kind of interconnecting in ways. So just uh, going through a few sustainable examples here now on site. So um, we track a lot of our energy use we have. Um, so as we're connected to uh, energy now. Um, so what we're in a view to use uh, resource more efficiently, become more environmentally friendly. We've been monitoring the power usage. Uh, it's, this is conducted every 15 minutes. So you can see the spikes and troughs of um, the different things that we're actually monitoring. So I can see like we have our cranes there. Cranes at the moment, you can see the problem at the bottom there, and it's very simple. Cranes are, you know, they produce quite a lot of electricity. Uh, but I'll just go to the next slide on, on the reason behind that. Um, and then you have your main newcomer lady there, which is the top. So, um, so we were tracking electricity and seeing like how can we reduce it. So we kind of looked at our, uh, our crane. So, cranes on site. So we have two on site now at the moment. So if you, this diagram here, it goes through the kind of power consumption. So as you can see, it's kind of going up to, you know, um, 50, 55 kind of uh, kilowatt hours. So like we got a we put a different data tracker onto the cranes because of the previous one here. We've seen the kind of spike low. So only like, you know, there's a little bit there, but once you go into the, Creative usage, you can see it actually goes up uh, depending on what you're lifting on site. It can go up to like 60 kilowatts. So, the reason behind this was not from a mains electricity point of view, is if we had generators on site. So, the size of the generators for um, cranes, they can, you know, they can say that, oh, you need a, I don't know, 150 kilowatt uh, generator. But once we were looking at it here, we could actually see, all right, what was the highest went up to? It was, it was 60 kilowatt hours. So is that what you need on site? A big, big generator and to be using a lot more, a um, lot, lot more fuel? Or let's go for maybe, you know, two in series that you might have one kick in if you get to a certain um, load that you require. So th that's what we were looking at. And this is information we're getting from Bono Key and using this, this company. So again here, like it's 88% of the time, it's under 0 0.5 kilowatt hours. So that's, uh, it just kind of shows you like it's probably at an idling stage uh, most of the time. So um, again, I'd probably just go through these slides quite quickly. Um, we could be a lot of contamination on the site because of the kind of oil storage there. And um, there was a couple of options that we had to, to well, it's really only one option you could take with a lot of the material. So, there was a full uh, soil suite analysis done, and uh, we, at the start, it was quite high, the amount of material that might have had to go abroad, because in Ireland there's no place that you can really, you know, there's no hazardous waste landfills in Ireland. Uh, there is a place down in Port Leash uh, that uh, can treat uh, hazardous waste that has hydrocarbons and heavy metals and certain other parameters. But we did a full analysis, and we ended up Happened to send 8,000 away, which is a lot higher at the start. We were thinking it could have been about 15,000. Uh, so we kind of halved that, uh, and then half of it went treated uh, down to Port Leash. And also, there was another kind of 14,000 through the analysis that we could send to NERT and 
Ron has Lampard in, in Ireland. So that was really good. Um, just really good for the the project in the whole. And plus where it's going to Norway as well, it's going off to an island which was a limestone, uh, it was a limestone quarry. So there, it's a real environmental benefit out there because they're regenerating the whole island uh, out there to be an environmental haven actually. So if you actually look in the website of NOAA, uh, no AS, uh, you'll be able to see more about that. So again, we have water treatment on site um, due to the hydrocarbons in the, in the ground. Uh, it was quite a good system we had in place. So initially we had two silt busters, sludge tank, pump chamber, carbon filter, inspection tank. So um, we were given limits as well by the Gold City Council and uh, we had to adhere with them. And by having the system in place, it was actually quite, it went quite well. And then just a couple of other things inside. So we just had a little bit of rainwater. We had rainwater harvest in our main compound. Uh, we've donated 200 trees to um, offset a lot of the carbon. So uh, I think from them 200 trees, uh, 115 ton-ish is going to be offset. Uh, so that's quite good. Uh, we've fur boxes, all that stuff uh, on site. We've electric charge point is going to be installed. Uh, we have bike racks installed as well. So these are just little things that they're also doing to kind of promote uh, kind of sustainability on site. We then see uh, all our KPIs in, a lot of them are there for water, um, waste, timber, energy usage. We do have it logged on the smart waste system. So um, it's quite a good system to use to, um, to kind of log uh, our environmental KPIs more like. So, um, and that is about it. Um, any questions you can yeah. ask afterwards?